to uh, Avidyne right now. And Tom Harper, let's put you on the hot seat. All right. In no uncertain terms, it's been a really interesting year for Avidyne. Been fighting for certification, developing products, and not one product, not two products, just a whole parcel of products. Indeed. A stack of products, so to speak. Let's get into where is Avidyne right now, what's going on, what's the latest, greatest, most as fast as neatest, coolest. All right, well, let's see where to start here. At the show, we've announced several new products. Uh, of course, ADSB is the big hot topic of the show. Uh, we've announced two new uh, ADSB transceivers, UAT mm -hmm. uh, 978 megahertz solutions, the MLX200 and the MLX210. And the only difference being the 210 has an embedded GPS. Mm -hmm. The 200 works with our, our new IFD540 and soon to be released uh, IFD440, which uh, we're submitting for STC for TSO this month okay. and should have STC and initial shipment starting next month on the IFD 440. Okay. So other announcements we uh, with the with the certification of the IFD 440, that also marks the certification of release 10.1 software All right. for the IFD 540, and we've already got a pretty good install base of 540s since it's certified last July, and all those customers will get a free upgrade to release 10.1, which mm -hmm. will, among other things, activate the first wireless connectivity to those products mm -hmm. uh, using the Bluetooth channel. As you may know, the IFD 540 and 440 have integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, yeah, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth hardware, and this is the first wireless connection. In fact, uh, it'll be with a, a little Bluetooth keyboard like you see here. There you go. So Pilot can actually enter flight plans or change waypoints or do direct to or actually zoom the map in and out without having to reach across okay. uh, the panel to get to it. So it's gonna it's uh -huh. kind of the first of many uh, wireless day, things to come. Really helpful. Yeah. So lots of neat things going on. Let's talk about the star of the show right now. The the box that everybody's been waiting for, the box that's now in circulation and we're getting some initial reports. As a matter of fact it was interesting I was on the uh, Bonanza board the other day, and there, there's a love fest going on with the 540. Uh, this was the box that benefited from some extraordinary technology in R9, which I flew to death and yep. love even more. Uh, and of course, you're building a whole stack around, you know, 540, then 440, and, uh, <coughs> and other Excuse boxes. Me. But where does that box stand right now? Where does it go from here? Uh, and more important, what are you learning from the initial deployment? Well, the, the IFD 540 is, and the 440, for that matter, those are platforms for the future. They, we really designed those with the bells and whistles and a lot of hooks to, to be upwardly mobile, if you will, as, as technology changes over the years. So this is the basic platform. Uh, with release 10.1 software, again, we're adding Bluetooth. Later on, we'll add Wi-Fi. Of course, there's all kinds of interest in having uh, <laughs> tablets and smartphones in the cockpit. And that's going to enable those sort of things. So you can <coughs> kind of use your imagination. We're not ready to announce any of those just yet. But the kind of things where with ADS-B <laughs> coming into the cockpit, now you can get it onto your portable device. Uh, flight plans going from your portable device into the boxes. So all those kind of things are, it just opens up the panel for that. We also, excuse me, we also announced uh, a remote transponder. Mm -hmm. And it's an ADS-B out transponder. So now that'll give a 1090 solution. Uh, in addition to our current panel mounted transponder, but the beauty of the, the remote mount transponder, a lot of guys just don't have panel space for a 540 and 440 unless they pull the transponder out. So now they can remote mount their transponder and control it right through the 540 and 440. There's a few aircraft models that are going to benefit greatly from that. They really are. Familiar with one or two of them myself. Exactly. <laughs> All righty. Well, you know, that's one of the things we wanted to do. We have a huge install base of Integra-equipped Cirrus aircraft. Mm -hmm. There's a couple thousand, maybe over 3,000 airplanes out there. And they're all looking at us, well, you know, what's, up, what's our ADS-B yeah. path? And now we've got several paths, depending on them, how much money they're able to spend on their airplane, from a standalone UAT with embedded GPS to a full 540-440 package with a remote transponder and... Uh, ADS-B in, ADS-B out, uh, they can have it all and actually display it on their Integra as well. Have you gotten, by the way, have you gotten past the initial uh, backlog on 540s or how long you got to wait to get one right now? 
we are doing really well. I don't think we, I think we've completed most, if not all, of our deposits on the 540s. Okay. So now we'll be jumping in and, and later this quarter, start initial deliveries on the 440 deposits. And then we're kind of splitting production like we did with the 540. So half of them will go to the deposit mm -hmm. holders and the other half will go to new sales. Interesting. Uh, what is your current uh, thoughts about the, the glass cockpit systems that you've done in the past and where do you go from here? Uh, you know, obviously you learned a lot from R9. Yeah. Uh, and those of us who flew it loved it to death. Uh, at the same time, that's a vicious market. It really is. Uh, there's been some pseudo domination out there, but the yep. plain fact of the matter is it's been mostly on the part of market rather than the part of achievement where I thought the R9 won everything hands down. Yeah. We're, uh, what's happening with uh, glass panels right now? Well, we have a couple of announcements we're not ready to make, some OEM partners that we're working with. Okay. Uh, but, you know, the, the market's just now starting to, we, we're, we can feel it just in the crowds that yeah. are here that the booth has been packed all day. Uh, Avidine's doing more hiring than we've done in the last several years. So we can, we can feel it in the marketplace and things Excellent. are starting to come back. And that's an indicator too of, as you know, hopefully we're going to get more airplane sales. And as the OEMs begin to get their sales numbers back up, they're more open to looking at other alternatives and, and changing, uh, or at least offering alternate uh, options on the at the OEMs. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to that. Of course, with R9, the evolution of it, we took all the knowledge from R9 and moved it over into the IFD 540. There's some things we learned with the 540 now that we can take back into R9 as R10 or Integra 3 or whatever we're going to call it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, touchscreen being the most obvious. But uh, so those are the kind of evolutions of the product that are going to happen well, over time. Well, hurry up. I'm going to be shopping for Twin Comanche later this summer and I'm yeah. going to want something in front of there except outside of those old analog exactly. look at me gauges. Yeah. Uh, be a good time to be so looking. So, you know, between that, uh, of course, we've kind of put a lot of other product development on hold to get right. the 540 and 440 done. DFC 90 has just continued to get rave reviews as an autopilot, and oh, the, you know we need to get the servos done so we can then go out and start doing more STCs. And just that's really we're limited mm -hmm. by our STCs right now. So okay. it just takes engineering effort, and time, and money, right? Well, the DFC 100 that we flew in our system a ways back was certainly the most capable autopilot we'd ever flown in a GA airplane. It really was quite extraordinary. We had a lot of fun with that thing. Yeah, it's a great autopilot. The DFC 100 is designed for the R9 system. The DFC right. 90 was designed for the earlier Integra system and also to work with the Aspen PFD. So we've got a lot of avenues we can go. We just need to get, get the additional STCs. Overall, what's uh, what's the attitude at Avidine right now? You guys have certainly taken your lumps waiting for certification. And of course, that's a story being told by a number of people in this hall right now. But uh, at this point, uh, what's the future looking like? Well, let's see. I, uh, once we get through the 440 and those certifications, we've got, uh, you know, turn our attention to some, some other, again, back burner projects, right. PFD 4000. Uh, uh, autopilot servos, all mm -hmm. the certifications that go with that. So we've got plenty on our on our roadmap to go after. It's just, uh, you know, kind of getting through each wicket and, and, and crawl, walk, run, if you will. So Now, every manufacturer is in the process or <coughs> putting excuse forth me. a solution set, <coughs> excuse me, for the 2020 mandate. Yep. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, boy. That's what I need. Yeah, right I think now. it's in the air here. Um, We've talked a little bit about some of the solutions, but what is the overall modus operandi right now for Avidine vis-a-vis ADSB and ADSB development for the future? Well, we've, we've pretty much got, with the announcements at this show, mm -hmm. a full suite of ADSB offerings to meet the needs of customers with Avidine displays, mm -hmm. right? So if you even if you have an old EX500 MFD or the Cirrus has the old EX5000 MFD, the big screen, you know, those guys, those products have been around since 03, 04, when they first came out. Uh, now they have an, a, way, a path to ADS-B with these new UAT boxes and with our uh, 1090 products as well for ADS-B out. So uh, legacy MFDs, of course, we've got R9, we've got Integra, so we've covered on, then of course, the IFD 540 and 440. So mm -hmm. we've got 1090 solutions for guys flying above 18,000. We've got UAT solutions for guys that the altitude restrictions don't apply. 
And of course, the 1090 is also for international markets as mm -hmm. well. So we think we've got all that covered. Uh, it's just a matter of you know finishing up the certifications on those, and then just going after our new programs. Right now, this industry is looking more at retrofit and keeping older airplanes flying, and the quality of service for the suppliers to those airplanes has never been more critical or never had to be more on point. Uh, what's happening with the customer service scene at Avidine? What changes may or may not be made? What are you doing right now in that particular regard? Well, as, as you know, I, uh, Avidine has made significant strides in, in customer service over Huge. the last five years. Uh, and uh, we were primarily a, an OEM company and you know, with, with this huge install base out there, we really had to learn in a hurry to, to support those guys. And now we've, we've got a pretty robust uh, field support, product support system in place mm -hmm. that we can take care of this install base and going forward, it's an order of magnitude difference when we start selling 540s into that bigger retrofit market. And uh, so we've, we've got those guys in place. We've added more folks on the phone to talk to dealers. We're doing way more training now than we ever have with the dealers to make sure they're uh, you know, in the loop and understanding how our products work and how to install them, how to repair them. And another cool thing we've done with the launch of the 540s, actually we had it with R9 as well, but it's the ability to, to download data logs off the, mm -hmm. off the hardware. So now, how many times in, in the legacy avionics have you gone flying, uh, the pilot comes back and tells the dealer, uh, yeah, it did something weird when I was in flight, and, and the, then now the dealer can't replicate the problem, mm -hmm. and now you're left to just get back in the airplane and fly it and hope it doesn't do it again. With the ability to download all the data logs now, the dealer can just download the logs after the flight, email them to Avidyne, we can analyze those logs, and even in some cases, replicate the keystrokes you were pushing that led to that event and identify whether in fact it is a fault and whether we can fix it with just a software load that we can email back. You know, mm -hmm. so there's, it's a different way of, of troubleshooting that doesn't require shipping boxes and aircraft being down for such a long time. Near immediate gratification. Yes. And you know how much, you know That's how, what how the world is. Are, are so patient. Yes. Yes. Not. My so. goodness. Tom, you do an awful lot of work on behalf of AEA, the organizations. You've uh, played a number of roles within the industry. Uh, from that standpoint, uh, as we finish up here, where do you see the industry going? What are the observations you might make on its current health <coughs> and awareness of where it has to be, especially with some huge challenges, obviously the 2020 mandate being part of them, but between that and issues with the FAA and certs being going on at a snail's pace and so forth. Uh, what observations might you bring as an industry observer about the industry overall? Well, in the, in the, from an economic point of view, it appears that, the, that the, because the economy seems to be moving the right direction, that we, we're seeing a little revitalization of activity in our industry that I, I'm excited to see. Uh, in terms of what the AEA is doing, you know, our tra all the training classes that we've been holding here at the show have been packed. In fact, mm -hmm. we had standing room only and had to turn a few people away. So we're doing a, a second training on Friday morning for those folks. So that's that. those are good indicators of what's happening. Nice being busy, isn't it? It is. So there's a lot going on, uh, a lot of activity. The ADSB bubble, as it were, uh, we, you know, over the next four and a half years is going to keep a lot of dealers busy. We all know that if the, the mandate from every, everything we're hearing, the mandate's not going to slip, and folks are going to have to start <laughs> getting in line to get equipped. And uh, you know, the, between ourselves and the other avionics manufacturers, there there are a lot of offerings out there uh, to meet the the various needs of of the different customers. We certainly wanted to make sure our installed base of customers is getting the right ADSB solutions, and of course the others are doing the same. So that's going to keep dealers busy. The other thing that's coming along here is what's going on with UAVs and all mm -hmm. that whole thing, and how is that going to affect you know that's the my repair next trip stations? Next week and, is all yeah. about that. Oh yeah, my. so we you know that's a lot of unknowns there that uh, they're going to reveal themselves over the next few years. Oh my! Pretty exciting. Tom Harper of Avidyne, uh, so appreciate your stopping by to see us here at Aero TV.
Aero News Network's coverage of the 58th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Now certified Aspen Avionic single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Avidyne provides innovative avionics solutions for general aviation aircraft, including the IFD-540 and IFD-440 FMS GPS NAVCOMs with Geofill, hybrid touch, and full ADS-B capability. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, NAVCOM, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. The IntelliFlight 2100 Digital Flight Control System is the perfect complement to today's integrated flight decks and is certified on the King Air and Conquest. It will now interface to a single EFIS and a mid-continent SAM 302 unit for a low-cost, complete panel upgrade. Contact us at www.genesis-aerosystems.com. An interactive links application is available in the Apple and Android app stores. This free app is a virtual simulation of the Lynx NGT9000 touchscreen cockpit display that lets pilots interact with the unit as if they had a real system in their hands. The app covers the entire Lynx family of ADS-B products, including features and options to help customers decide which Lynx model is right for their needs. Meet Sam, the new 2-inch standby attitude module from Mid-Continent Instruments and Avionics. Sam offers selectable horizontal and vertical orientation like no other, guaranteeing the perfect fit within any panel. Learn more at flysam.com. NavWorks makes ADS-B affordable. Certified or experimental, NavWorks gives you high-quality next-gen avionic solutions that dramatically increase your situational awareness. Check us out now on the web at www.navworks.com. The debate is no longer about upgrading GA aircraft with next-gen. It's about financing it. The next-gen GA fund is about doing just that. Find out more at www.nextgenfund.com. 